A lot of times, when you interview in for help desk position, employer would like to know your knowledge of Windows 10. In this tutorial, I'll show you typical questions and answers asked as part of such job interview to test your knowledge of Windows 10. Restore point allows you to revert back to the saved snapshot of the Windows 10 operating system in case something goes wrong after installation of new software or new drivers. Restore point allows you to take a snapshot of your working configuration of Windows 10 so you can restore it in case of the disaster. You can launch and create Restore Point and change settings from Settings app or directly from the Start menu. Let's do it from the Settings app. Let's launch Settings. From here, let's start Create Restore Point. Here, you can either configure Restore Point or create a new Restore Point. Let's look at the configuration options first. It is always recommended to have this setting Turn On System Protection on so you can recover from driver installation or new software installation if something goes south, an application or your system configuration doesn't work after such installation. When this setting is on, Windows automatically takes restore point before major changes in the operating system. Here on the screen, you can also limit how much space you would like to allocate to store restore points and delete restore points that have been taken in the past. You can also manually create a restore point. To do that, just click a create button here and type the name. Typically, it's a good idea to describe restore point so you can go back and find it when necessary. Once restore point is created, you will see this confirmation message. In case you forget your Windows 10 password or your system will get compromised, it is very important to have alternative way of accessing Windows 10. To do that, you might consider creating backup administrative account, so you have alternative way of logging in and recovering your information. I recommend creating local recovery account to make sure you can access your system without needing an internet connection. To do that, you would need to navigate to computer management, and here you can navigate to the local us users and groups. Make sure to select users, and here you just right mouse click and select new user and then type new user account. You might consider using names that easy for you to understand, but harder to guess so nobody can guess your account and you always want to use secure passwords here. The name might be backup admin 98 uh, to give it some randomness. Uh, you might also want to uncheck this uh, unless you do want to change the password at next logon and typically select password never expires and then type the password here. And then once uh, everything is set up, you click create button and user account has been created. By default, Windows creates standard accounts, but what you can do now, you can make this account administrative account. To do that, you do right mouse click, click properties click member off account is the member of users group but we just promoted it to make it member of uh, administrators group if you'd like the content please make sure to click the like button share with your friends and subscribe to my channel it is always a good idea to create a backup of your drive c when computer is still working and you don't have any issues this way you can restore drive c in case of the disaster to complete the backup of your drive c you might consider creating system image disk in windows 10 to do that, you need to navigate to Backup. You can go directly by typing the Backup uh, right in the Start menu, or you can also use, uh, call the same option from Settings. Here in Backup, we go to Go Backup and Restore option from Windows 7, and then choose an option to create system image. Windows is looking for the drives where it will attempt to save the backup, and it should be a separate drive, so this way, if something happens to your C drive, you can restore from another drive. In my configuration, I have two drives available. One is drive C, which is a 256 gigabyte, and another one is drive E, which is 512 gigabyte. I'm gonna attempt to save system image for drive C onto the drive E. And now we can just select this drive and click next. Windows offers you to backup drive C and also Windows system uh, recovery environment. And all you need to do is just click start backup. Once backup is complete, Windows offers you to create a system repair disk. You can use this disk to boot from DVD and then use this backup image to restore your drive C. 
If you don't have it, it's a good idea to have it and create it when you still can. Or if you have another computer, that's what I rely on, and one computer breaks, you can always create it in another Windows 10 installation. So I'm going to click uh, No here. To restore your computer using system image you created, you need to reboot Windows in recovery mode and make sure your system image is available on one of the connected drives. To restore from the created disk, you need to go to recovery mode and reboot your computer in advanced startup mode. Once you're in advanced startup mode, you click troubleshoot and then you go to um, advanced options and then you go to system image recovery. So you need to know with which uh, user account this image was created. Mine was created with video recording account. You need to uh, type in your password. Windows identifies the image that was created and it offers you to restore from that. To avoid being hacked. It's very important to check and install latest Windows security patches and Windows updates. To check for updates, you type check for updates in the start menu and it launches Windows Update Checker. Once updates are identified, Windows typically installs them automatically and then reboots the computer to finalize the installation. For optional updates, Windows offers you to download optional updates uh, which makes sense to do to stay current and make sure you're protected against vulnerabilities. I also recommend you check advanced update options by clicking on advanced option button and make sure that you configure them by automatically receiving updates for other Microsoft products that you have installed. For example, it's very good for Microsoft Office. In addition to Windows updates, it also downloads all updates related to Office. Here you can also pause updates. If you suspect that update might damage your system, you can choose the date by which you will pause it. You can pause up to uh, 35 days. Microsoft typically provides major and minor updates, and these options allow you to uh, control when installation is completed for those. Sometimes you may need to download many applications at once as a batch, and you would like to do it from the trusted source. One of the best ways to do it in Windows 10 is using Ninite.com. To do that, let's launch the browser and you can navigate to Ninite.com. And here on the site, you see a list of free or open source applications and uh, you can select which ones you would like to download. Once you select what you want, the packages them and allows uh, you to download and install them all at once. And it also sets them up for automatic updates. This is basically a way of packaging applications to quickly download them from the trusted source, which is very important, and uh, also set them up so you can continuously get updates uh, when updates come out. I typically select browsers here because I like to use Chrome browser and Firefox. Uh, select the free compression utility, uh, which is very helpful for uh, Windows 7-zip. I select VLC Media Player, uh, which has a lot more capabilities than built-in uh, Windows Player, and uh, typically select Notepad++. Your interests might be different, so definitely explore those tools and see what's available. But let's go through the step and download. To proceed, what you want to do is uh, select everything that you need and then click Get Your Ninite. Ninite packages the applications and uh, creates the executable, which you can trust because this is a reputable source and a lot of people use this. Um, you click Run on this executable. Windows prompts you, do you really want to trust Ninite? And uh, you click Yes here. And after that, it goes and installs all these applications that you have selected. Once installation is complete, you can click Close. All applications are installed. You see VLC Media Player, Notepad++, and both browsers. Now what you can do, you can uh, position them for effective launch. You can launch them from here, from Start menu. Or if you launch it once, you can pin it by doing right mouse click and then selecting Pin to Taskbar option. Now even if you close Chrome browser, the icon is still there and you can quickly relaunch it again. Windows Storage Sense helps clean up the disk if you are running low on storage space. By default, Storage Sense is turned off, but it is always a good idea to enable it to allow Windows to help you manage the storage. To enable Storage Sense, you navigate to Settings, and from Settings, you type Storage Sense. By default, Storage Sense is off. You can either just generically enable it by switching this setting to on, 
or you can go into details and configure the settings. There are multiple options available when to run Storage Sense. You can either run it during the low free disk space event when you run low on storage space, or you can run it based on the calendar, maybe every day, possibly every week or every month. Storage Sense also allows you to delete temporary files that your applications are not using. It helps you look at the recycle bin and see how frequently do you want to clean up your recycle bin and also looks at the downloaded files in the downloads folder and look at when you clean up files from the downloads folder. You also have an option to free up space now by using clean now button here in this setting. To find what you're looking for quickly in Windows 10, it is extremely important to configure Windows Search and indexing options correctly. To configure Windows Search and indexing options, you need to navigate to Settings and type Windows Search Settings. By default, Windows 10 uses classic search and indexing options. To change that, you can click Customize Search Locations here and it opens up default search locations where Windows typically looks for the data. To change the settings, you need to click Modify button. By default, Windows only searches on Drive C in the Users folder and only searches in the specific locations. So if your files are located outside of these folders, then they will not be indexed and Windows will not be able to find them. For example, all of my files are located on external drive, which is 512 gigabytes inside. To enable indexing on this drive, I can just check this box and then Windows will index all the files on this external drive. You can also manually modify all the folders that you would like to include in your search. Sometimes when you copied or created a lot of files in your computer, you might consider rebuilding the index. To do that, you click on Customize Search Locations here, and here you go to Advanced Options. In addition to rebuilding the index by using Rebuild button, you can also choose if you would like to index encrypted files. If you navigate to File Types area, you can granularly define if you want to index specific file extensions and how would you like them to be indexed by Properties only, which would include file name, file description, size, and other attributes, or you will include file properties and also file content, allowing Windows to find information based on the file content as well. Reducing blue light exposure helps protect your eyes and allows you to stay more productive for longer periods of time when working in the computer systems. To reduce blue light exposure on your computer, consider switching Windows 10 into the dark mode and using night light feature of Windows 10. To do that, let's navigate to settings and you can type dark mode and Windows offers you turn on dark mode for apps and we'll choose this option. Here you can see that by default, Windows offers uh, light colors and what you need to do, you need to select dark colors and you see how background for the apps has changed and now it's much easier on your eyes and you can work longer to turn on night lights, what you need to do, you need to type night lights and you can also find this option through settings, but you can also navigate directly and you see that by default it's not turned on, but you can uh, turn it on and here you can select the strength of night light and you see how color is changing potentially because we're already in the dark mode, uh, the change is not as substantial, but if you would be in the light mode and your background will be light, uh, you will definitely notice the difference. If you'd like the content, please make sure to click the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. By default, when you launch command prompt in Windows, it launches it under standard user account, which provides you limited access to scripting environment. But a lot of times, you may need to run Windows command prompt as administrator. To run command prompt as administrator, you click the start button and type either CMD, or you can also type command prompt, the full name of the command. And here, before clicking on this, you do a right mouse click and select Run as Administrator. Windows prompts you, are you sure this is really want, what you want to do because this provides this command window administrative permissions. Uh, and we click Yes here. And you see that um, 
in the upper right corner, it shows administrator column command prompt right here. And this is a good way to differentiate between regular command prompt, which we're just going to launch to compare. So we type it again. And you see there are two command windows. One is administrator column command prompt and another one is just command prompt. Sometimes you may need to launch command prompt in the specific folder in Microsoft Windows. Let's look at how you can do it quickly. A lot of times if you launch command prompt, launches it right in your user directory. For example, mine is C users video recording. But a lot of times you need to launch it uh, in the specific folder. So you have to navigate. For example, you, you may go get to the root folder and you have to execute multiple commands. Windows provides shortcut and allows you to launch it right in the folder where you want it to be. To do it, you launch File Explorer, navigate to the folder where you'd like to be. So for example, if you want to launch Command Prompt window right inside the temp folder, you navigate to temp folder. Then in the folder bar, you type CMD and it launches it right uh, in the temp folder. And you can start executing command right for the temp folder. By default, Windows 10 hides extensions of known file types so it is impossible to differentiate between different types in your operating system. If you're using out-of-the-box installation of Windows 10, you typically do not see file name extensions. To enable file name extensions, you need to launch Settings app, then type Show File Extensions, and here, if you scroll down, you see different options under File Explorer sections that are available. Windows allows you to change settings to show file extensions and also display hidden and system files within the operating system. To change how Windows shows file extensions, you click on the Show Settings button. And Windows brings the dialog box where you can make adjustments. For example, to specifically look at the uh, file extensions, you need to uncheck hide extension of known file types. If you would like to see hidden and protected operating system files, you need to uncheck this setting. Windows warns you, are you sure that this is what you want to do? And if you're comfortable seeing this additional information, you click yes. And then you click apply. Now you can see that extension.txt is enabled in the sample text file. And if you navigate to Drive C, you will also see hidden operating system files that were not visible before. If this video was helpful, make sure to click the like button in your browser. Also, please help your friends to learn this topic faster by sharing this video with them. And if you would like to be the first one to know about new videos to help you reach your goals faster, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.